When it comes to computers and mobile phones and the internet in general, when it comes to online services, all the websites that you have to sign up for accounts for, you have to create passwords. And today I wanted to talk about how to create a good strong and complicated password. Now, some of the thinking behind how to create a good password, some of that thinking has changed over the years. I remember, you know, like in the 1980s, 1990s, you know, you could get away with a lot less as far as, you know, a strong and complicated password. These days, you have to take this much more seriously. I remember when I was a kid, it was often thought that to create a good password, you wanted it both a strong and complicated password, meaning it's hard for a hacker to guess what the password is, and you also wanted a password, though, that was easy for you to remember because we didn't have things like password managers typically, right? You had to remember the password yourself or you had to do something really dangerous, such as writing it down in a notepad or writing it on a post-it note. Maybe you had the post-it note on the computer. Or you kept a note underneath your keyboard. That was something a lot of people did. They had all their passwords on a file underneath their keyboard, right, written down. Uh, we don't do that anymore. I certainly don't recommend you doing that. That, that is actually horrible as far as for privacy and security reasons. Anybody that has physical access to your computer now has all of your passwords, so don't do that these days. Now we have these password managing programs that save all your passwords for you. And because most people use password managers, we no longer really have to worry about creating passwords that you can remember. You don't have to remember anything now. And because of that, we can make our passwords much longer and much more complicated as far as a mixture of uppercase and lower case characters as well as a mixture of numbers, special symbols, punctuation, and we should talk about including special characters and things in your passwords. When you go to any kind of website that requires you to create an account and create a password, they often force you to use uppercase and lowercase letters, a number, a special symbol, you know, they have some hoops to jump through in order to create that strong and complicated password. But here's the thing. What actually makes a password really hard to crack is not including, you know, an exclamation point or a question mark or, you know, an uppercase character every now and then. That actually doesn't make that password harder to crack. You know what really makes it harder to crack? A long password. It's actually the length of the password that really matters. So if you're creating a password that's only eight characters long, you know, that's much easier to crack. I don't care how many special symbols you throw in that, it's still only eight characters long, and a hacker that's trying to brute force attack that they can get into it, right? But if you have a password that's, say, 80 characters long, that is far, far more difficult for a hacker to actually break. And the reason I used the eight characters long example is because many websites and services, they require your passwords to be a minimum of eight characters long. That's the absolute minimum you typically have to make a password. But here's the thing, eight characters is not very long, right? A much stronger password would be somewhere between 12 to 15 characters long. Matter of fact, if you go 20 characters, even better. And I think that's kind of common sense. Longer passwords are much better than shorter passwords, but it's something that when you're being forced to create passwords, a lot of these websites and services, they really focus on that special character requirement, you know, as if that's the secret. And it's really the length that's the secret. So longer is better. But regardless of how long you make your password, there's really one thing you absolutely have to avoid. Do not make your password, regardless of the length, do not make it a dictionary word. If it's a word that's in the dictionary, that is super easy to crack. So don't do it. Now that said, it's okay to actually mix up multiple dictionary words into one big long password. Just make sure that if you're using multiple words together as a password, make sure they're not related words. For example, I wouldn't use as a password pepperoni pizza. You know, even though that's a really long password, you know, as far as character length, right? Pepperoni pizza, but you used two words that are highly correlated, highly related, right? That are often used in conjunction with each other. That's a little bit too easy. But if you wanted to put together two, three or more words as part of a, a, a password, as long as those words are not in any way correlated, you certainly could. For example, I could create a password of three random words as one, for example. How about 
dynamic headstand gradient. <laughs> Just three random words that popped into my head, right? They're not correlated. They're, they're not really related in any way. That would make a actually pretty strong and complicated password, even if I don't include special characters and numbers and things. Although typically you would want to go ahead and throw in uh, some numerals and maybe an exclamation point or a question mark somewhere in there just to break up things. Now, for those of us that use Linux as our operating system, we don't actually have to sit here and try to come up with a crazy complicated password, right? We actually have ways to automatically generate passwords for us. Typically, these tools are already on our system. If I switch over to my desktop, I'm on Arco Linux, which is a Arch Linux based distribution. And if you're using Arch Linux, you probably have this program here already installed, PWGen. That is password generator, right? If I hit enter with no other arguments, it creates eight letter passwords because that's typically the minimum you need for a lot of sites, but an eight letter length password is not the most secure. But you see, I get random letter and number combinations. Uh, you get uppercase and lowercase as well. Now remember, although eight characters is usually the minimum for a lot of things, you know, really 12 to 15 is kind of the recommended, like bare minimum. And again, I might go the 20 just to you know make things safe so if i give pwgen the dash s flag and then give it 20 for a length so this is the string length here you know now i get 20 character long passwords and it gives me a variety of examples and if you want some other examples of how to use the pwgen command it has a man page it also has a tldr page as well if i tldr pwgen it gives me uh, really the, th the three flags <laughs> that are available for PWGen. Now, PWGen, of course, is available on Arch and Arch-based distros. Typically, it probably is there. On other distributions, you may or may not have PWGen. On Debian and Debian-based distros, sometimes you have the make uh, pass WD command. Let me do that without any other options. And this is make pass WD. If you don't give it any flags or options, it creates a 10 character length password. It just pulls down some random stuff from slash dev slash random, I think is where it generates this stuff from. That may be where PWGen is getting its uh, passwords as well, but it creates a random string for you. And of course it does have some flags and options available as well. If I TLDR the make pass WD command, you can see it's got a few flags you can use. The most important one would be uh, setting the character length. For example, if I wanted to make sure that my strings were at least 20 characters long, I'm going to set it to use the flag dash dash chars and then give it a number, in this case 20. And now it gives me a password that is 20 characters in length. So between PWGen and MakePassWD, chances are one or both of those programs is available on your Linux distro. Even if they're not there, chances are one or both of these programs is available for you to install from your Linux distribution repository. So there you have it, just a little bit about how to create strong and complicated passwords. For the most part, remember, it's mainly about the length. Don't make your passwords too short. Definitely don't do an idiotic thing, like create a strong and complicated password that's only two characters in length. Don't do that. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. And of course, I'm talking about Matt, Steve, Armor Dragon, Cap Cave, Mandarloff, Daedalus, George, Lee, Methos, Erion, Paul, Peace, Russian, Vador, Realities for Less, Red Prophet, Roland, Wargentu, and Ubuntu, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this quick episode about how to create passwords would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen. I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work, want to see more videos about Linux and free and open source software, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys.